C-Log 2 on the Canon R5. Yep, you heard that right. It is definitely in there. Let's talk about how you can access it. The Canon R5 is a beautiful little enigmatic camera. And one of the fun things about it is discovering all these little, little hidden features that aren't really advertised on it, but add more and more power to the system. And I recently came across one that I think a lot of you would be really, really interested in. Some of you may have heard this before, some of you haven't. It's not something I've really heard advertised that much and I wanted to make you aware of it. And that is C-Log2 does exist on the Canon R5. And I've heard a lot of people out there are really lamenting and wishing they had access to C-Log2 on the Canon R5. Now, just a real brief uh, overview, C-Log2 versus C-Log3, when you're shooting in log on a camera, the log gives you a flat color profile that increases your dynamic range of the image that you can then come in post and try and eke out as much perfection in your image in post. Now, C-Log2 is the flattest color profile that Canon makes, and it actually has the most extended dynamic range. Now, the Canon R5 currently only lets you shoot in C-Log and C-Log3. And a lot of you wish you could take that beautiful sensor on the Canon R5 and get the maximum amount of dynamic range you could on it in C-Log2, and you lamented that. And I discovered something very recently. You absolutely can access C-Log2 on the Canon R5, but there's a catch. You have to be shooting in RAW to do it. So what I wanna do is I wanna go outside, take a look at this and show you the processes of how you can go and set your Canon R5 to get C-Log shooting if that is something that is important to you and you really wanna go out there and check out. So let's go ahead, jump outside and take a look at this sucker. Okay, so I'm out here now with the Canon R5 set up to demonstrate the first version where I discovered the C-Log2 part of the camera. And that is actually when I was using my Atomos to figure out some of the raw settings. And here is really what is interesting. If I come to my Canon R5 and come here to the raw menu, I'm gonna set on HDMI raw output. I'm gonna set that to on. When I do that, what you'll see here is my Atomos will switch over. And now when I switch over to raw, what you'll get if you look at the actual Atomos itself is right here. It says Canon Log 2. Hmm, this I found extremely interesting. Now you can see I'm shooting ProRes RAW in Canon Log 2, and that's what the camera's outputting. And I found this very, very intriguing. Now you can see here I put a Freewell Magnetic uh, VND on the front just to get there, and you can look at my waveform here. I really tried to make sure that I didn't clip anything because I wanted to see if I took some posts, is this giving me that extra dynamic range that we know and expect from C-Log 2? I've also chosen a very ugly scene. This is super high contrast, uh, but I really want to see the shadow in the tree and the clouds there to see if this could make sense for what we have. So now that we've done that, I'm also going to record a clip internally on my camera in RAW as well so we can compare those together. Let's take them in the computer and see if we're actually getting C-Log2 on the Canon R5. So let's go take a look. Okay, so I'm here in the computer now. We've got the footage. Let's go ahead and take a look at this C-Log2 and if it's actually transferring here onto the computer. And what I do wanna do is take a first look here at my footage that came from my Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. And this is also true, guys, if you're shooting on a regular Atomos Ninja 5. You do not need a 5 Plus to see this because the Canon R5 on the regular Atomos Ninja 5 can record cropped 6K RAW out. So if you want to record 6K RAW on a Ninja V, or if you want to record 8K RAW or 5K on the Ninja 5 Plus, both options are there. The same thing will happen in your computer. Now, if I come to my source file, this is what really blew me away the first time I came in here. I have the ProRes source settings in Premiere. And if you look here, I can set my color space. But if I set my color space, look at this. The only Canon option I have is Cinema Gamut, C log two. Hmm. I can't even get C log three on my color space in ProRes RAW if I'm editing in Premiere. Now I may have more options if I'm in Final Cut. Honestly, I don't use Final Cut. Uh, so for me, that's not something I could tell. I'd love to hear if some of you out there can actually get C log three in ProRes RAW on Final Cut. But if you're a Premiere editor, you have one option. That is C log two. There's not even a C log three option 
for the Canon R5 if you're shooting RAW. So I will put that down as a definite, yes, the Canon R5 definitely captures C-Log2 from the Atomus. Now I did want to check out one other thing, and that is internal RAW recording on the Canon R5. And this is where things got very interesting. Now, in order to get this done, I want to do an apples to apples test. So I literally took the same raw clip and then I duplicated it just so I could apply different settings on it and get a true apples to apples measurement against the two different files. Now, if you look over here, I'll click on my first one. And if I come here to my source file, you will see that I have it set. The color space is cinema gamut, just like I shot. And the camera I can set to Canon log 2, 3, BT709, a wide dynamic range, or DCI. Now, I'm going to do Canon log 2. And now I'll go to my other clip that I have here, and you will see that I have this one set to Canon log 3. So, we have an option right there. We can set the exact same clip between Canon log 2 and Canon log 3. And if I jump between them, you can see how the color space is, the gamma, is different between the two clips. Now, let's go and look and see what the scopes are telling us, because this is really where the proof is in the pudding. And if you look here, this is the Canon Log 2 scope. And now what happens is when I come over here and click on the C-Log 3 scope, you will see the difference right there between the two different scopes. And this is really, really interesting, because this is a very, very uh, mathematical way of showing you how these two log forms are. Now, C-Log2 is the lowest contrast log you can get on a Canon camera, which is why it gives you the most dynamic range. C-Log3 gives you more contrast built in, and it comes with the benefit of less noise. And you can actually see that here on the scopes. If you look here, I have my C-Log3 file. You can see right from the bat, this is just a raw file. You can see I have more of a scope photo out there. You can see the contrast build out there. Whereas I come to C-Log2, the contrast is much lower. And then look at this. This is a telltale sign here that I'm working in C-Log2. Now part of this image is very uh, dark and you can see the noise that you get a lot from C-Log2, which is one of the reasons why some people prefer losing that little bit of dynamic range to work in C-Log3 because C-Log3 tends to be less noisy than C-Log2, which is one of the big things when you're deciding on what you're doing. Do you want that dynamic range or do you want not want to have to worry about the noise and the noise cleanup later, which is one of the big factors in deciding between these two features. And I don't want to go on a big talk here about grading log two versus log three, because that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is showing you that when you actually get the proof in the pudding, the Canon R5 absolutely does shoot Canon log two if it is something that you're interested in. And I just think this is really interesting. It's one more time it proves that Canon has features that are quote unquote hidden in the Canon R5 that don't really publicize, but are there. So anyway guys, I hope you found that interesting. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Uh, please leave me any comments down below. And yeah, go out there, keep on shooting. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.